back to the Castle Grounds Apiary. Today, we will start part two of the stone and steel beehive stand. Like I mentioned in the last video, this side we'll do uh, with a drill and bolts. Just keeping it simple, that way if you don't have any uh, metalworking tools, you can still get this done this way. And on this side, we're gonna weld it up that way, which is my preferred method and I have the materials and, and equipment to do that, but if you don't, you can still do it without uh, a welder or a grinder with just nothing but a drill and some basic hand tools. So. All right, we're gonna start with the bolt-up side. Honestly, the simplest way to do this with some of these T-plates that you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, wherever. I honestly wanted to go with some a little bit bigger than this, um, but these will work. The idea is, is you run bolts all the way through to the other side. You sandwich the metal between these T-plates and uh, use these long bolts to go all the way through. Now, it can be tricky because you need the bolts the bolt holes on this side to line up with the bolt, bolt holes on this side and really the easiest way to do that is to find the center of each of your pieces I had these cut if you recall to 18 inches just a hair over but close enough probably so we'll make a mark at 9 to mark our center And you really want to mark that on both sides. So there's your center there. And then you want to mark center on your post. Now these are three inch square tubes and they are not like, it's not like lumber where the actual dimension is smaller than the you know, two by four is not two by four, it's one and a half by three and three quarter or three and a half, depending on. We'll mark this at one and a half. And same over here. And what you can do when you have that is line up your marks. And then you can take your T plates and I like to use like a drill bit before we get there. What we need to do is create a reference point on each one of these plates. And what the reference point does is it allows you to make sure that each plate is in the same spot relative to the metalwork on each side. So I'm gonna make a reference point. I don't know, let's let's hold it up here and see where we wanna be. We want, that looks good. So we'll, it's our reference point, and then we'll make a line across both edges. And so now we know the line on both edges lines up with the connection or the, where the two points or where the two pieces of metal touch. So, and if it's not perfect, that's okay. It just really needs to be close. So now what we do is we line our reference point up, basically centered. I like using just a little sh a drill bit to make the, the mark because it's, e it's easy to see. Okay, we'll do the next one the same, or do it the same on the other side. So ideally what will happen is we will drill a hole where we made our mark and it'll come out on the same spot as the other mark. We'll go ahead and run the bolt through and that'll kind of let us get 
aligned and then once we have a, a hole on both sides started then we'll go ahead and make our marks for the others and then we'll go from there so go take your drill these are quarter inch bolts really I wanted something bigger but it fits perfect in these t-plates and these were the biggest ones that uh, Lowe's had I wanted something bigger but honestly this will probably work just fine so we need a quarter inch bit hopefully I have one and really you want you may want to drill a pilot hole these are good titanium bits and I have no doubt that they'll go through this. Also, I don't have a smaller bit. I left them at, up at the truck. So we're going to just go for one hole here. So line up with the hole you scribed through the bracket of the T-plate. And so you see, even with a good titanium bit, even without a pilot hole, It'll punch through this 11 gauge steel without much problem. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and get the bracket started total with the t-plates and the bolts and the washers and the nylon nuts I think I spent uh, I don't know like maybe eight or nine dollars definitely use washers you can use lock washers or split washers I like to use nylon washers just because if it's not something you're gonna be taking on and off nylon washers are really I don't know they, they, they seem to hold the best. All right, so. Washer, bolt, plate. I'm gonna do the bolt head on the outside and we'll do the nut on the inside. And then you might have to do a little finagling to get the bolt through the other side. I see you. Poke on through there. There we go. Now these are three inch square tubes. I got three and a half inch, sixteenth, one sixteenth bolts by three and a half inches long. Now let's go through nicely on the other side where we will run another washer and the lock nut will be just long enough to grab onto. Honestly, four inch bolts might have been better, but they didn't have any. Not surprisingly. And on nylon nuts, you really want the threads to get through the back of the nut. But I think it'll be I think it'll be fine. Alright. So now all we gotta do, once you get these lined up and just kind of started, you don't really have to take any more measurements because everything should be where you want it. And you should be able to drill right through and be done. So that looks pretty good. I didn't bring my crescent wrench down here. That's okay. We'll get them all finger tight and I'll come back through and I'll, I'll snug them up afterwards. All right. Holes. 
Come on. There she is. Okay. Washer. Hard to do with gloves on. Washer and nylon nut or stop nut. There's some different names for it. All right. Now from here, now we just need to make sure we stay square, stay centered. And they should stay true to each other if you do. Well, that's a little cattywampus. Okay, that looks good. Nope, that looks good. Get another hole going, and I won't make you watch all this. Get these other three started, and then we'll go to the other side. All right, so I'm not gonna go into the details of how to weld. Uh, for one, I'm not a welder, and if you are, I'm sure it's obvious to you by now that I'm not. And two, there's plenty of references and resources out there that you can look at. But what I hope you can see is that it is fairly quick and easy. That was faster than bolting up that side. And that's even getting out the material. and all that and it's you know not good I, I was running a little hot probably it could have gone a little colder or faster but anyway that's that so now the uh, perpendicular support horizontal supports are done now we'll cut the seat purlin and go and go across the top all right so our vertical posts and our perpendicular supports are three by three 11 gauge square tube for the for the uh, other supports I don't know what you call them beehive holder things we're using one and a half inch by four inch C purlin now this is a 24 foot piece if you are going the no metal work method like I said you can have these cut at your metal supplier these are a lot cheaper than the three by three inch 11 gauge square tube um, so having, a, having two of these sections cut and, and, and bought will probably only be 20 to $30. Um, like I said, I already had these laying around, so I'm just gonna cut these down. I'm gonna do nine feet span so it matches the other one. That way we can fit a, six hives on here if we want, five comfortably, four very comfortably, and it should hold up just fine. So I've made a mark at nine feet, I'm gonna cut it. I'll make another mark at nine feet, cut it again, and then we will set these up.
Now for attaching the C purlins to the square tube on the bolt up side, I got these little corner brackets, one and a half inch. They're a little higher than the purlin, but not so much. It'll be a problem, I don't think. Um, you can get these anywhere. Again, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. And they come with some screws, like wood screws. I went ahead and picked up some bolts to run through there. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. That way I can drill my holes and kind of manipulate the C purlin and get the brackets on before I weld it and then I can't move it. So I'm gonna drill some holes. We'll bolt these brackets on. And then I'll get the brackets on the purlins first and then we'll go down onto the square tube. And then we'll jump over to the welding side. Okay, this is all pretty straightforward. On this side, I just kind of eyeball it. And then I'll use my drill to kind of score the purlin. And I'll stand it up on end. And then just pop a hole where I saw where we scored it. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll come in with a couple nuts, couple washers, couple bolts. And like the T break brackets, we will just uh, finger tighten these. And then I'll come back with the proper size end wrenches and get them nice and tight. Or socket wrenches, whatever you have handy. Get that centered where we had it and then we can take our leave that bracket where it is and just run our holes through did i buy enough oh just exactly enough how does that happen never happens to me got exactly three left for that side and I didn't go in that top hole just because there wasn't enough material on the purlin. And two should be enough. This might be a little tricky to get this bolt on because it's at, on the inside of the square tube. So one, clean your metal off. And then uh, if your fingers don't reach, you might use like a pair of needle nose or something to get them on there. Are my fingers gonna reach? No, they're not. All right, I'm gonna get some needle nose. Here we go. Grab your nut with your pliers. Run it up underneath until you can see it. And then just put your bolt through. I wish I had my screwdriver on me. I'd go ahead and get this tight now. Now we don't want to get these snug until we get that the other side squared up because if you get it tight and then everything's not square down there, you'll have to come back and make some adjustments. So just get your bolts started. And then once everything's started and you like the squareness, then go back and tighten them up. All right, the other side is bolted up. Now we'll make sure this side is square. And I already cleaned off the material. So we'll run a bead here, here, and on the faces. Then the hard work's done.
once your welds are cool, your bracketry is all done, tightened up, your metal's clean and free of any surface rust. Now remember, if you buy this new and primed and pre-cut, there's not going to be much grinding you need to do. It's going to come pretty clean. This is old Perlin's. So if you get it fresh, you'll get some mill, mill scale on the on the raw metal, but if you get primed metal, then you really don't even need an angle grinder. But if you do, it'll clean off pretty easy. Um, get it clean and uh, seal it up with some spray paint, whatever you want to use. Okay, so that's where we're at for part two. We've got both sides secured, one side bolted, one side welded, and we have a coat of primer and paint on it. Once it dries, I'll probably hit it with another coat. You can use whatever kind of paint you want, as long as it's a good exterior um, primer, paint in one. Uh, and in the next video, we'll do some finishing touches. We will put some anti-skid material on the tops of these sea purlins. We will put some stone on the cinder blocks. We will fill the moat with some oil and at that point it will be ready to go. So thanks for watching. Part three will be coming out soon. Thank you.